Drawing characters, touching and interacting is very difficult. At least I found it very difficult early on when I was learning how to draw. I would look at a pose that had two characters like hugging and I, my brain would like short circuit. <laughs> I was like, I can't handle this. It's too complicated. I'm out. So when you're tackling a pose that involves two characters interacting, it's very important to break it down into more digestible parts because um, it can be very overwhelming if, say, you're not very familiar with drawing like the human form or animal form. I don't know. Your characters don't have to be humans. What I find very helpful when diving into a complicated pose like this, it's very important to draw out all of your structure and pay attention to overlap. Uh, so if you're drawing, say, like, two hands that are being held together. Um, instead of trying to figure out where all the fingers go, if they're intertwined, draw two separate hands. Really focus on making sure that you have the structure of the palm and the fingers and figuring out how to interlock that. Before you start trying to put down like your final lines, get lots of underwork, draft work on there so that you have a very good blueprint of where to put your lines. And when you run into something where you cannot see, say like an arm behind another person or like you don't know where the legs are, Go grab references. This is very important, especially when you're learning. Um, grab references and that missing arm that's like hidden behind someone in a hug. Try and draw that. Try to imagine like where it is. Find poses from like different angles to see like where all the arms and legs and hands go and stuff and practice roughing in where the limbs are because that really helps when you have to draw a pose where you can't see all the limbs you need to know where they are to understand like the shoulder placement or like the way the spine is, whatever it is. It's very important to understand like where all parts of your character are because <laughs> it'll make your poses stronger. Another great way to keep track of all your different characters and all their different limbs is to draw them each in different colors. This is especially easy if you're doing digital work. Um, put them on different layers, use different colors for the sketches so that you can keep track of which body part belongs to who. Ha ha ha. Ursula laughs at everything. Ha ha ha. It also really helps to understand your anatomy. I feel, I feel dirty saying that. Because <laughs> honestly, you don't need crazy good, like, anatomy skills to draw character poses. But it's good to have, like, a very basic understanding of, say, how different joints work. Making sure that your characters are in proportion to each other really helps with making sense of poses. So yeah, try and understand how different joints move because a shoulder, you know, it, can't, it has a ball joint but it can't move in every single direction um, and things like that. Make sure you're not bending wrists so that, you know, it looks like the hand is breaking off. Just little things like that that just make it feel more real. And like I said, reference is your best friend. I say that in every video because it's true. Get your references. Go out there. Practice. Study. Hooray. Now I'm going to talk about gay fairies. Yeah. <laughs> so, these characters are from the Save Your Dad from Fairies RP. We have done two, three videos already, oh my gosh, on all these characters. So I would definitely recommend watching Bones's video about uh, Russell and all the kids because he will explain kind of how, how this RP begins. <laughs> so the two characters here are Lady Summer and her servant maid, Cordelia. And yes, we do have <laughs> two fairy RPs. Both this character's name Cordelia. Oops. Oh well. <laughs> With how many RPs we have, it, names are bound to overlap. But Lady Summer, so she is originally from the Flora Court. There are four fairy courts. Flora, Fauna, um, Pestilence, and f Fungi. That's it. <laughs> and Summer is one of the daughters of the king of the Flora Court. She's not the first daughter. She's not the heir or anything. That's not really how those, those fairy courts work. She is like the tenth daughter. So as kings in these courts have children, the, the more powerful they get. So the first few babies, um, they're usually girls. They are not very powerful, um, and the later they are born down the line, the more powerful they are. So Summer is not very powerful, but she is a daughter of the king, which makes her important. She plays a role in a lot of the other courts, doing like, I don't know, courtly bureaucracy things. <laughs> um, she works in the pestilence court. Not exactly sure what she does. It's probably very hoity-toity and high society, because that is her. <laughs> right. But... 
Summer, she is originally from the Flora Court, but when she was younger, she fell in love with the king of the Fauna Court. So they were married. They had a child together. Um, his name is Fallow. Like I said, kings have a lot of daughters, and this is because whenever they have a son, that son is the only person in the land that can slay them. So usually when a king has a son, he has them killed so that, you know, they can't come back and kill them and take their throne. You know, they keep their throne until they are killed by one of their sons. Um, so a fairy king can rule for like thousands of years until finally one of his sons escapes and kills him. Uh, and then all of his children, all of his other daughters that are surviving will eventually like turn to ghosts and disappear. Um, and that is how, I don't know, the cycle goes in their world. Right, but usually the kings will have the sons killed and the only person who can kill the son is the son's mother. So when Summer has a child with the Fauna King and it is a boy, he's like, you gotta, you gotta kill him. It's also their first baby, so, which is very rare. It, one, it's very rare for kings to have sons, but it's also very rare for the first child to be a son. But anyway, so he's like, you gotta kill this kid so that he doesn't overthrow me, and Summer just cannot bring herself to do it. Um, so luckily, no one can kill her son except for her, but if she stays in the fauna court, they are going to pressure her and coerce her into killing her son. So she leaves, and leaving her husband breaks her heart, because when they get married, their hearts fuse, um, so leaving him and taking Fallow with her, this breaks her heart and knocks it out of place. Um, so from then on, she has a lot of trouble loving. Oh, I should also mention that Summer is the lady on the right. She has, like, the branches for hair. Because she's from Flora, she has, like, she's, like, based off a tree. Um, she, normally her branches are full of leaves. I'll get to that. Anyways, so right, so she leaves with her son. Now, because her heart is pushed out of place, she has trouble finding love. It's very rare for fairies to, like, remarry and fall in love many times. They usually find one person that they fall in love with, they get married, and that's who they stick with for the rest of their lives because your heart melds and, you know, you can't refuse your heart to other people. So that is the problem that Summer runs into, where she's continually trying to remarry and find love. She falls in love very easily because of the state of her heart. So she marries many different men, uh, three other men in fact. One is a merman who she meets in the Flora Court. They have a daughter together named Lily, who's a sweet little mermaid daughter. That eventually falls through. She runs away because she can fall in love easily, but she can also fall out of love very easily because their hearts don't meld together. So she leaves, and from there she meets a pixie in the fungi court. Uh, same thing happens, they have a daughter who is this lovely pixie girl named Bella, but Summer leaves again, and finally she goes to the pestilence court where she is during the main events of the plot, where she falls in love with a goblin, and they have a son together who is this lovely little baby named Snot, and again she leaves this goblin and falls out of love with him. Um, and so finally, after all this, her father, the king of the Flora Court, he comes over and he's like, you can't keep doing this. You can't keep remarrying and having children with all these different people. Like, you need to marry someone and stick to it. And if you keep doing this whole charade of, like, remarrying, I am going to take your heart away because it's very irresponsible. Um, and it's very outside of the norm of, like, what the fairies do in this world. So Summer is freaking out because if her heart is taken away, her kids aren't taken away. They die. They disappear. It's similar to how the king's daughters disappear when the king dies, the babies will die because they are made with the magic of her heart. So if her heart is gone, they disappear. So she's like, I need to find a husband who I can stick with. And she's like, shoot, that is not going to happen. My heart is broken. So She's like, what if I find a human? There's no way for a human and a fairy to meld hearts. So she's like, they can never prove that we've fallen out of love. They can't prove that we're in love, but they can't prove that we're not in love. So she's like, I'm going to track down a human who can take care of all my babies. I can go do my stuff in the pestilence court and live my life and not have any worries. So, she goes to the human world. She kidnaps Russell. So once she has Russell living with her, she has him taking care of the kids. Um, at first, he gets taken over by, like, the bacteria that are, is all over the pestilence court. Um, and it starts making him very sick and killing him. 
Um, so she marries him to bind him to her, which will stop him from being affected by the pencil the pestilence court. So after that, he's a really good dad to all his fairy kids. She enchants him to forget about his human kids um, and his human wife. He's a really good dad. He gets really affectionate with the kids because he's a human and humans require a lot of like affection and snuggles and like humans appreciate when you show your love to each other, as you know, because you're all humans. <laughs> um, but fairies, they don't care about any of that stuff. Fairies don't really touch, because when you're in love, your hearts are melded. You know, children's hearts are, like, fueled by their parents' hearts and magic. Um, so they don't really need to prove their love to each other. They kind of do, because, like, through the RP, we kind of realize that, like, the kids are really lonely and they really miss their mom. But, like, in fairy society, you don't think about that stuff. You don't worry about it. They don't have any concept of, like, mental health. But yeah, so when he is very, like, snuggly and human with the kids, he starts turning their hearts human, because that's what all the affection does. Um, so Summer, eventually she freaks out, and she's like, you need to stop being affectionate with, like, the kids, because you're turning them human. And he's like, okay, fine. Um, but that affects his heart. He starts turning very fairy-like and stony and cold. And in the meantime... Summer starts trying out some of this affection stuff with her, her maidservant, Cordelia. Um, so Cordelia is, like, low-key in love with <laughs> Summer. <laughs> she doesn't know it, because, like, they don't really have very much knowledge of, like, the gays in the fairy world. They just don't think it's a thing, even though it is in their world, despite this. Uh, so Cordelia has not, like, addressed her feelings at all. Um, she just thinks she's very devoted to Summer, but... Summer begins, like, doing things like holding her hand because she's like, Russell holds hands with the kids. It seems, like, really nice. It's what friends do. So she starts holding hands with Cordelia and then they start snuggling on the couch. They all kind of do it as, like, it's like a joke at first. It's like a meme. They're like, haha, look how human we're being, holding hands. Isn't this so funny? And, like, they think it's really cute and hilarious and they're kind of making fun of Russell. <laughs> Oh, and then Russell teaches them about what a kiss is, because he thinks Summer is his wife. So he goes to, like, kiss her, and she's like, what are you doing? And he's, like, kissing you. And she's like, what is a kiss? And he's like, at first he's confused, because, like, he has clashing memories of, like, his wife being a human and then Summer being his wife. But he explains what it is. And he's like, you know, it's where you touch lips because you love someone. And she's like, what? We don't do that. <laughs> but eventually she's like, Cordelia. Let's try a kiss. <laughs> and Cordelia, her heart goes flutter, flutter, doki doki. And so they start like kissing and making out and stuff because they discover that they really like this affection stuff that humans do. So like Russell will just walk in and Summer and Cordelia are like making out. And he starts having, like, flashbacks to his, like, human wife cheating on him. And he's like, yo, this is not okay. Summer, you cannot just go make out with your servant for many reasons. <laughs> One, problematic. Two, you're cheating on me. <laughs> and she's like, I don't see the problem. <laughs> I'm not a human. Um, so eventually this does lead to Russell leaving um, through his friendship with another fairy named Dahlia. He discovers that he has forgotten about his human kids and his human wife, and he's going to run back to the human world to um, fix all that. But meanwhile, uh, Cordelia and Summer are still like smooching and cuddling and stuff, and they realize that their hearts are turning human because of all the affection. So that's as far as we got with Cordelia and Summer and their relationship. Like, end game, I really want them to get together because they're very cute and totally lesbians for each other. So right around when, like, Russell leaves, his human wife Jane shows up because when she realized he was missing, she jumped into the fairy world to go save him. Um, when she gets there, she comes in through the fauna court and being there starts turning her into a bird. Um, she is captured by a fairy lady who is Summer's sister and there's a whole talk about Summer's sister that you can go check out. The Bones did. So Jane, while she is with uh, Summer's sister, uh, Lady Ficus, she meets a bird named Tang. 
He is a hornbill. He is a beautiful boy. Um, he's a very old bird. He's lived so long that he has gained the ability to, like, speak, like, human languages and many other languages. And he's kind of tired of, like, regular birds because he's kind of, like, he's smarter than them now and he doesn't like doing bird stuff as much. He kind of wants to hang out with, like, fairies and humans. He had, like, a bird wife previously who, like, died thousands of years ago. Anyways, so him and Jane go off to find um, Lady Summer, which is where they think Russell is because they don't realize that he's on his way back to the human world. Um, so they show up at Summer's door. Wait, I missed a plot point. <laughs> So, yes, she is looking for Russell, but she also discovers that um, because she was turned into a bird, she needs to be turned back into a human. Now, the only person who can turn her back into a human is the Fauna King, uh, because she was turning into a bird in his kingdom. Um, so, she meets the Fauna King. He's like, I'll turn you into a human, but you have to go find my ex-wife and um, have her murder my son. Um, and she's like, sure, I guess. <laughs> So she travels to find Summer and then to find Fallow, bring Fallow back to the, the Fauna King to be killed or used to blackmail Summer. Either way, she's supposed to get Fallow to the Fauna King. Um, so she shows up at Summer's place. Summer turns her into a servant. Um, and she's like, you will be my servant. Because she has no idea that, like, Jane is here to kidnap her son. Cordelia, she is like, nah, this girl is trouble. <laughs> Immediately. She is like, she suspects Jane of being a meanie. She also is mad at Jane for like being a servant there. She's like, excuse me? You can't take my heckin' work? That's what I do. I'm important to Summer. No one else. Um, oh, I also should mention Cordelia like does a great job taking care of the kids. They, like, love her, and she'd be a really, really good mom to all the kids, because she's, like, they've grown up with her and stuff, but Summer does not initially, like, consider her as, like, a wife material, because they don't have any concept of gay marriage. <laughs> it's, it's all Russell who brings gay marriage to the fairy world. Um, <laughs> uh, right. And while all this is happening, little do they know is that Fallow sneaks away in the night. Um, he, through this whole thing, he is, like, determined to kill his father. Um, so he is stuck as a teenager. Fairies, they, they only age when they pass certain milestones. So, like, you might not grow up from being a baby if you never learn how to walk and things like that. So, like, Fallow has been stuck as a teenager. The only way for him to mature into adulthood is to kill his father because he is a king's son. So he has been stuck as a teenager for way too long. He's really mad about it. Um, he also has, like, oh, <laughs> just urges to go kill his father. Um, so he finally, like, sneaks away while all of this, like, hubbub about human husbands and stuff is going on. Um, and he's like, I'm gonna journey to the fauna court and kill my dad. So he leaves. He makes it to the fauna court pretty okay. And he finds this, like, random grove with all these, like, deer in it and stuff. And it's very quiet. No one's around. He's like, good, I can sneak into the fauna court all sneaky and no one will find me. And then he's shot with an arrow. <laughs> And he's approached by a hunter. Um, this hunter is from, like, the fungi court. His name is Deathcap. Um, he's an edgy boy. He's also a teen. And he's like, what are you doing in this sacred grove? This is where, like, the Fauna King's sacred deer are um, that I'm hunting for him. Like, you can't be here without the Fauna King's permission. And Fallow's like, oh, I got lost. Haha, <laughs> I'm gonna leave now. And Deathcap is like, wait, hold on. You should be dead. And Fallow's like what? <laughs> no, your your arrow didn't, like, wound me that bad. And Deathcap is like, no, my arrows are covered in, like, the special poison that I make myself, and it will kill anything within minutes. You should be dead, or at least gravely ill right now. And Fallow can't die because he is the king's son. The only person who can kill him is his mom. Um, so he starts pretending to be sick. He's, like, trying to get away from Deathcap. <laughs> So he doesn't get found out and captured. That is also where we left those two. <laughs> um, Summer is just discovering that her son is gone and she's like freaking out. She's like trying to send people to go find him and Jane is like, oh no, he gone. What do I do? Also, Bones just revealed this to me recently, but apparently Deathcap is like the king's son of the fungi court who probably also wants to go kill his fungi king dad. So yeah, they eventually were going to be boyfriends if we ever finish this RP. <laughs> Bless. So yeah, those that is that is the fairy RP. 
uh, where it is right now. The Save Your Dad from Fairies RP. They're very cute. I ship it. I can't wait for gay marriage to be legalized in the fairy world. <laughs> It'll make a lot of fairies very happy. So, thank you so much for watching. We're puppy sitting and the puppy's very sad because she can't go and play and make noise while I'm recording. So I'm gonna go. Um, check out my Instagram. Maybe I'll post pictures of the puppy. Also, all my Inktober pictures are there. So if you want to go stare at them with your nose pressed up against the screen, you can go there, I guess. Okay, goodbye. Wait, the Instagram is in the description. There we go. Bye.